Are you a do-it-yourself investor and deciding whether to invest in mutual funds or ETFs? Well, here to talk with me about this is Hannah Zarzuski of Blue Mountain Financial Planning. Hannah, welcome. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Pleasure to have you here. You recently wrote an article on this very topic. Um, where do folks need to begin thinking about whether they should invest in mutual funds or ETFs? Yeah, and so the first component that you would want to consider is tax efficiency. And so overall, ETFs tend to be more tax efficient. However, that doesn't matter if you're investing in a traditional IRA or Roth IRA. So that is an important um, detail that I like to point out. Um, but if you're in a taxable brokerage account, ETFs tend to be more tax efficient um, because of turnover and then also because of distributions. And so, you know, if you're comparing an index fund for an ETF and a mutual fund, that may be less of an issue, but it's still something that you want to factor in. Yeah. Oftentimes, many uh, mutual fund owners are surprised by their year end uh, distributions and the taxes. Uh, that it creates for them. So good point. Exactly. I think. Yeah. The, the other point I'll just mention, maybe you could comment on tax efficiency is one thing, but obviously with ETFs, if you're buying and selling, you'll be incurring possible capital gains and losses. Is that right? Absolutely. And so if you are trading frequently, um, you will accrue <laughs> gains or losses. And that's something that many investors are surprised to see that it, it quickly adds up over time. And then all of a sudden, when you're filing taxes, you see that you, you may owe quite a bit of money based on what you traded. Something else to consider as well, and I don't want to get too into the weeds with this, but there are wash sale rules, which basically mean if, if you're actively trading, um, some of your losses could be disallowed. And so investors find that they're counting on some losses to cancel out gains. And then that's not something that works out the way they planned. Right. Uh, what about how they trade? What do folks need to know about that? Yeah. And so mutual funds and ETFs, they trade quite differently. So mutual funds, they're going to settle at the end of the day and every investor gets the same price for that day. Whereas ETFs, they trade throughout the day like stocks. So you're going to have a bid ask spread, which can also be an additional cost that most investors don't recognize. Um, and so some investors find that mutual funds may be easier to trade because you can just put in an exact dollar amount. For example, you could buy... Um, $50 worth of a mutual fund, whereas with an ETF, it's share prices. And so it's not just a specific dollar amount. You're going to need to figure out how many shares of that ETF to purchase. And at some custodians, you can purchase fractional shares. So that does make it simpler. Um, but, you know, there's still a little bit of complexity when you're trading ETFs. Right. And then in terms of being able to place market or limit orders, uh, ETFs have the advantage over mutual funds there. Um, and so you do gain a little bit of control. For example, if you want um, to place a limit order, you can determine at what price you're willing to sell the shares at. Whereas with mutual funds, it's really just if you sell the shares, you figure out the price, the price at the end of the day or even the next day sometimes. Right. And there are some differences with, with fees and minim, minimums that people need to think about? Yes. And so first, just to address minimums, some mutual funds will have a minimum initial price before you can buy that mutual fund. So for example, $1,000. And so that can be a barrier if you're just starting out um, because you, know, you have to have $1,000 before you can buy one mutual fund and then another thousand before you can buy another. So it can take some time to get to your target asset allocation for each subclass. Um, and with ETFs, again, it's just the share price, sometimes a fractional share price, depending on the custodian. Um, and so that's less of a barrier to get to your target asset allocation. Um, and then also with fees, you know, it really depends on the specific mutual fund that you're looking at, but mutual funds do have the potential to have higher fees. And so that's important to recognize. Um, 
And then lastly, you know, something I mentioned earlier with the bid ask spread, that's a cost to ETFs that, again, it's, it's an implicit cost, but it's still there. So what about automation? Yeah. And so automation, in my opinion, is one of the most important components and it's often overlooked. And so that's why I really wanted to address it in the article. And with ETFs at nearly every custodian, it's not possible to set up automatic investing. And that's just a function of how they trade. And so with mutual funds, you can set it up and you can designate specifically which funds you want to purchase and the percentage that you want to put in each mutual fund. So let's say you're saving $100 a month into your account. Whenever that $100 hits the account, it will automatically invest the way that you had designated. And so even if you're not investing every single month, the frequency is not incredibly important, but what's nice is it's on autopilot. And so, you know, it can become quite a chore whenever you're saving money. And then you have to remember as soon as that money hits the account that you need to go and invest it according to your asset allocation. And what I find is that many investors, it's difficult when life gets busy to keep up with that. And so then money ends up sitting out of the market. So uh, all that said, what which is best? Yeah, great question. <laughs> and, you know, one thing that I point out in my article is that it, it really depends on your specific situation. And so there's just not a cookie cutter can answer for every investor. Um, and that's really why I try to walk you through what may apply to you, why it's important, and that way you can make the decision that's best for your circumstances. And then another thing to remember is you don't actually have to pick between the two. You could use both and, you know, implement the advantages from both in your portfolio. Right. Well, Hannah, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our readers and viewers. It's uh, greatly appreciated. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you.